Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Creatives Ignite. It used to be called Design Recharge, and we've switched it. Me and the mouse in my pocket. No, I'm just kidding. It's more than just that. Um, But I am very thankful to be joined by my friend Chris Martin, who helps me with so many things, and he's a great, great idea generator. But let me tell you two things about Chris. One, he got a dog this week, the cutest, cutest pug ever. And if you have a pug, I'm really sorry, but come second to Cosmo, the magnificent, wondrous pug. No. But just Cosmo, the wonder pug. The wonder pug. But there was magnificent and wondrous or something, right? It was always wonder pug, but you know, wonder, wondrous, it's all the same. He's a good boy. Anyway, it's so, he's so cute and it's so fun to see Chris, like he sends me all these um, wonderful pictures of Cosmo and he does have his own Instagram. So maybe Chris, you could put it in and then they all can be able to see it and follow the super cute dog as well. But the other thing is Chris has, um, is an avid journaler and he keeps these huge sketchbooks, like not like small at all. This is the size of his normal. Is that a nine by 12? How, what's the size? 20, 12, 24 by 36, 18 by 24. Looks like 14 by 17, 14 by 17. That is big. And that's what Chris writes in, right? Mostly. Yeah. I and have he, a variety. And he wrote a book recently in that, but wrote it by hand and then went through it. And one of the reasons is that it was at that size. That's still a big size, bigger than what I use. This was right here. Nine by 12? Nine by 12. Okay. So uh, Taylor says that wouldn't fit on my desk. Um, So, but the problem, the thing is, is how often are we you, me. So hopefully if you got to read your email, which you might not have, you just know what link to click. But I asked you to, to I asked you a question. If you, uh, when was the last time you went through your sketchbooks or your journals? And now Chris, I know because him and I talk all the time and he has been writing this book. And so he regularly is going through back through notes. So before that, though, Chris, how often, and I know you're pretty reflective of a person, he puts out two podcasts a week, but now for a little while, he's just doing one podcast a week. He's holding back. He got to episode 600, yeah, so he's just trying to, you know, trying to give me a little chance to catch up. This is just episode 408. He's done it in almost six years. I've done it in 10, whatever. I'm not competing. We're, it's, but anyway, I love, I love his podcast, Getting Work to Work. Um, you guys should check it out. But um, Chris has how, before you were writing the book, how often you, would you regularly go back to your sketchbooks or your journals? I don't think it was very often. Generally it was, if I was looking for like a quote or just something to be surprised by, because the nice thing about having a, a backlog of sketchbooks, I write a lot of book quotes, um, that are just interesting to me. So I can just go back to three years ago open up to a random page and be like, okay, on this day at this time, this is what I read. And this is what I chose to wrote down. So fascinating. But how often do you, did you guys um, maybe, so Amy said she um, was going through a bunch in January as she was prepping for her design recharge episode in February, but how often, I mean, I think we actually, Debbie talked that she last week, She said she regularly goes back through, regularly goes back through her drawings and regularly goes back through um, her, her uh, sketchbooks. And I'm like, you know, I, I do it, but not as often as maybe I should. And I think that it is that there are some gems that I've written down that I need to re-remember. Re-remember? Is that like an oxymoron? Anyway. (laughs) Just an extra set of re Riri, Riri, that's what we call uh, Leroy, um, the cat, uh, just in case anybody's wondering. But anyway, so I wanted to kind of prompt you to see, because I, I was going through and I was uh, doing a talk for Mindset Reboot, which you can still get tickets if you want $100 off. I have a um, 
a coupon code and Brian Harper gets to go. He won my free ticket this year, last week. Uh, so got that. Um, I'll give you the code. It's just creatives ignite. And um, I can give you the link in a little bit, but um, so if you want to go, but I was prepping for that and I'm not telling you what I'm talking about. I'm not giving you that away, but what I, I realized something as I was going through a bunch of sketchbooks, I saw something. So I, I found a pattern. So I'm, I'm going to start my deck. Is that, are you ready? Okay. So if you don't know, I love rocks and I am turning off the chat. So Chris, you're going to interrupt if you see something. Okay. Sounds great. Okay. So I, um, I actually found my original rock drawings and this was one of the patterns that I saw. So I decided to think, and I would love for you guys to tell me what you maybe see as you go back through. And so maybe during this talk, you pull out an old sketchbook, maybe you pull out your most recent sketchbook, and then you maybe pull out one that is from a while ago, or maybe you don't have a sketchbook. I know Van for a long time has been working just in regular pieces of paper, or Paul has lots of pieces of paper and doesn't necessarily. I am going to challenge you to get a box of that out and go through it, whether it's post-its or notes, or I have just stacks of papers. So maybe I just want you to pull out something because I want to see what you're finding in yours. This isn't just about me, although it sort of feels like it, but not really. It's not. Of course, it won't go. Okay, so this is one of the first ones I had done. And I did this, uh, I gotten some watercolors and colored pencils when I was at my parents' house. Mom, maybe you remember this one. Um, this was like, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago. And clearly I didn't date it. I This is when I started making blobs too. So this is the beginning of the blob. I didn't make them anything except rocks. and whatever. Clearly I went way too crazy with all the lines, but I don't care. Nobody has purple pink rocks, probably not this many. Right. And then I did this one, which I don't even think I finished this one. Some of them I liked, some of them I didn't, but I started seeing people in it. So do you see like this one? Can you see my mouse, Chris? Yes, I can. Is anything happening in the chat? I see seven. Oh, it's all good. Okay. These Hannah sucks, Schick Diane. loves the uh, purple pink rocks. So pretty. Oh, so the, I'll show you the size of it. But do you see this one? It looks like somebody's hair, right? I started seeing things in it. This kind of looks like some like a weird nose and this is their hair. And then I started seeing other things in them. So this was kind of like this bridge. But these also sort of looked like gems. I think I did colors that I didn't think were real rock colors because I didn't want to be wrong. Because I thought somebody will be like, that's not what a rock looks like. So I was like, huh, I'm making my own. I'm making my own rocks up because really a rock could look like anything, you know, but I think I was I held it back a little bit more with my stripes, which I think was good. What's so funny? Brian says it's art. There's no rules. Mm, not to me and my designer brain, but I wish I wish I had more of that. But what I realized is this: these were ones that were coming up in regular pieces of paper. So I, at the time I was using new tools. I wasn't great with watercolor. I had this Faber-Castell light uh, gray marker that I was doing these shadows and they're not great, but that's okay. I was, I was trying something new. So I went to something that somebody couldn't say I had ruined or I did it wrong. And I could actually rework over things by using the, um, colored pencil. So I was mixing media. I had three different media, four, I guess, if you count the, the white um, marker, but I was just playing, but I was, it, it was very safe, right? But these were pretty big. Maybe these were nine by 12 pieces of paper too. Um, and then this was just a very small sketch. I mean, it was probably, this is just a few months ago. I did this or a month ago. Um, maybe it's like two inches by an inch or something. Um, but this was kind of like the thought. So I did this really quick sketch. I do a lot of when I'm doing design, I do quick sketches. It's how I think or plan. It's not that I ha had to actually make this exact. I just kind of wanted this sort of look. So now I'm going to show you some that I maybe not be proud, maybe not be proud of. I can't even speak English. 
um, <laughs> this is definitely something I, I was actually had made a whole bunch of mess. And then I went and I started using this fine line that I, uh, Usually I have frisket in it for as a masking fluid and it's in like a needle nose thing. So I started drawing with it, but it wasn't ma- frisket as me and Chris, I regularly call it brisket It is not brisket. It's frisket, but this is another one of those and it's just black ink. And again, I went to rocks to build up my confidence because I had made something really yucky or I, I didn't feel like I had, I had felt like I had lost the skill. And as Anna knows where she is in Colorado, or if in, you're in Utah or any state that doesn't have a, Arizona, New Mexico, there's not a lot of trees sometimes when you're going hiking. So they will mark the trail with a rock Karen and it's C-A-I-R-N, a rock Karen. And that is a trail marker. So you don't actually, you know, sometimes people will be like, well, I'm adding my stone. Okay. You can add your stone that you've been here, but you just can't take things away because this is marking the trail. You're supposed to go left here, whatever, right. Stay on the trail. Um, I don't know if people knew that or not, but I end up, I really like this rock Karen motif. And I think it ends up in my sketchbook when I'm doing something new, it ends up when I'm working on something. So as I was going through my old sketchbooks, I kept finding rocks. And I realized that I was either using new materials, I wasn't feeling confident, and I I wanted to make something that I really liked, but I didn't feel good at it yet. So I made rocks. So it I can actually go back through my sketchbook and it becomes this trail marker, right? Of of growth for me. And I don't know if there's something I, I do draw some other things as well, but here's some more. Um, this is a little bit of collage. So there's envelope uh, insides on the one on the right. And it's not finished. I need to keep working on. There's clearly no dimension on some of those. I will, I just cut them out of a envelope. And then on the left, I made a cupcake rock Karen with like a map pin And I specifically wanted that ink just bleeding off because I don't usually do that. And I just wanted to be okay with it being messy. Oh, hey, Diane. Yes. Catherine Moore wants to know, ooh, what kind of needle nose frisket? What kind of what? Needle nose frisket. Oh, uh, it's fine line. This is the fine line. And I don't want to take it out because I have to really focus to get, but it's a needle nose under, under here. And there's like a little pointer thing. <laughs> Squirrel, I know. Thanks, John. So this is the frisket. It's pink, the mask. And then it's the same bottle. Um, this just has ink in it. And so I draw with this. And I draw with this too, but anyway, the end. Um, but that's it. Catherine, is that? She said, thanks. I've never had that come in a needle nose before, but that sounds so handy. Yes, so, thanks. Let me just show you what it is then. So it doesn't come in it. You have to make it. Well, the frisket comes in it at Hobby Lobby. You can buy it like this. But then I actually bought it in another thing and then put it in this. These are just empty bottles sometimes at Hobby Lobby. I mean, I'm sure they ha- have them at Michael's too, but so it has like another little thing and see, yeah. so oops. I'm drawing with that. So that's really small. I mean, if you look at my finger, right, it's pretty small. But then you have to put that little thing back. And when your eyes, when you get old, it's like, can I get it in? I don't know. This is where Chris will have to just cut this. Oh, I got it in. I got it in. Oh, good job. Yeah, good job. Now I got ink on my hands. Okay, back. Are you guys ready to go back to the thing? Back to the rocks. Back to the rocks. Follow the yeah. trail markers, Diane. Follow the trail markers. Follow the trail markers. That's right. That's right. Okay. Let me. There's this one, which I was using this graphite, this Lyra graphite, uh, water soluble graphite, which I really like. And then I had done this other thing and it was too much. And John was like, that's overworked. So then I was like, I'm going to cut them out because I love scissors as a drawing tool. And so very similar, right? They're, uh, these are five by seven, maybe. I don't know. I'm really not great with sizes, but I was just trying different things. These don't have much. I was just kind of doing the background and I'm just playing 
but who can say that I wasn't necessarily doing it right? And I have definitely made some serious messes in some of this stuff and that's okay. And I'm just trying. So I'm using these 3D sticky things to like build it up. And then I tried to do this on a bigger sheet of paper. You can see there was the big rock and the small rocks, right? And it kind of went and I started doing the water soluble. And then I just messed it up. And my friend Mario, he was like, just drip some of that acrylic ink on it. Well, it didn't even drip good. It just made puddles. So I was like, forget it. I'm just smashing this around. And I just had this as a scrap sheet of paper. So I started like, you know, mixing colors on it for something else. Like I literally started using it as scrap paper. And then I was like, okay, I think you can, you can always salvage anything. If I think that, which I do, then I want to see if I can salvage this. There's something kind of cool about what's happening here. Because in my sketchbooks, I would come back to things and I'd be like, that's not as bad as I thought it was. Or I can't believe I thought that was good, you know, like whatever. But most of the time I was more surprised at what I was able to to see. So this is what it is today. And it's sort of uh, Paul and I were kind of talking about this the other day. And it sort of looks like a koi fish. Maybe the colors sort of looks like these koi fish are see-through that you can do. And so I added a little bit more and you could kind of koi fish this up. I haven't, this isn't finished at all, but again, it's just this water soluble graphite where I, I wanted it to look like some of the rocks were underwater. And I, I don't think it's completely solved at all, but I really like that. I'm just playing with a mess and it was, I think a really ruined sheet of paper. And now I made it. So it's less ruined. Any comments? Amy Alliance says, very cool. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Okay. All right. So, um, but I also love, as maybe some of you know, and maybe some of you don't, I love the inside of envelopes, the security envelopes. My mom saves them for me. And I absolutely love the AT&T ones because they're bigger. And that's what I've built illustrations that were in a book in. So security envelopes plus collage is just joy for me because it's already trash, right? You're already going to throw it away or recycle it. What's so funny? Amy Lyons has a big collection she's bringing to Creative <gasps> South for you. Oh, yay. I'm and so Van happy. loves seeing the process and journey. Oh, thank you. Okay. So um, thank you, Chris. Um, Ryan says Debbie Clapper should make her own version of security envelope. Yes, she should. She should. Maybe she'll make it at Creative South. She'll make her Creative <laughs> South security envelope. She totally could. Um, but I love this because so to me, security envelopes are often, uh, they just are thrown away, right? So I kind of feel like sometimes maybe I was misunderstood as well. And maybe uh, some people might not appreciate some of the things that we are able to do. And maybe often we're misunderstood, but we actually are certain we have a purpose and maybe we understand it. Maybe, maybe the Maybe people don't just, but I do love collage as well. So these were, these are very, I'm not going to keep them on the screen too long. These are like the first things that I did with security envelopes. And it was like something for AIGA here. And they just needed some posters to go up on the thing. And it was about folklore. So I had to think up um, and it was for the international festival here. And this was like the first time I just, you know, I, was doing watercolor, which wasn't that great at. And I was cutting things. I kept making mistakes. And I was like, why can't I just cut things up then and make it? So I do really like these trees back here, Chris. Mm -hmm. And th so the legends of the Lenape people, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's a um, Native American uh, tribe. I believe they're in the Northeast or somewhere uh in the Northeast, I believe. Um, but they believe that these trees would, if you were killing animals and not using all of the parts of them, you were, you know, being a bad steward, I guess, of what was given to you, that the tree would like eat you. So this was a very angry tree. And um, he was killing this pilgrim. Anyway, that was my attempt at a pilgrim. But I did like that I used like a like the uh, sewing pattern, you know, 
that kind of brown. I liked that. And this was my attempt at a dead deer um, and a, an alive deer. Um, but again, I wasn't trying to get it all in one piece. I was okay with cutting things and putting things together. And I, this was really the first time that I did that. And then Loch Ness Monster um, over in Scotland. I don't know if Nessie's supposed to be red or not, but I definitely, definitely could use some more work with my uh, watercolor at this time. This may be like 2014, but at least I'm trying, right? And I'm, I'm finding this love of security envelopes. Uh, a couple weeks ago in class, uh, I, I'm teaching this conceptual drawing class and I felt okay that day instead of just over doing something else, working on uh, something on the computer. I was like, you know what? I'm going to just draw with my students today. And of course I started drawing rocks and I added some watercolor, watercolor pencil, and I just had two colors. So my friend Jody was talking to us about the mother color, which if you take any colors, so you had three colors on your palette and you mix them all together and you kind of make this mud. Then if you go back to the the yellow and you mix a little bit of the mud color, it creates a, if a palette that they all the colors go together. So I had purple and like a, a red and then I combined them or like a rusty color and I combined them together and it made this kind of browny purple thing. So again, I'm just playing. I'm not trying to make anything, but I was like, okay, I'm going to try some different tools some different shapes. I don't usually use these tiny little dots, but I was just trying. And this, this was the other side of the paper. I made two separate drawings. And again, I'm just trying some other materials and making things that aren't solid rocks, these circles, you know, like, I don't know, maybe it's a, a ripple in the, I have no idea. I'm just playing. And I very rarely play purposelessly. Purposelessly? Is that a word? Without purpose. So me and you have talked about this, Chris, mm -hmm. like we're not, we're doing something not to make money. Mm -hmm. How much time as an entrepreneur, do you think you maybe before COVID were you spending just doing um, exploration? Mm, I would probably say maybe five to 10%. So very little. Okay, so now you you rebuilt guitars, you're playing uh -huh. more music, right? Uh -huh. And you weren't maybe doing that as much as what you were Correct. before. So yeah. how much time now do you think you're playing? Uh, I would probably say 60%. Okay. Lately, probably 80 to 90 because of the dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just since Sunday. So you got right. you haven't even had him a week. You play up, buddy. But but you've you kind of switched from being burned out or yeah. empty to pouring into something else. And you read a lot like there's other things that you're doing, but you weren't necessarily pouring in or playing. And I'd love to know what everybody in the chat there, you know, and if you're watching this later in the recording, I'd love for you to put it in a comment. How much time, what percentage do you currently play or before COVID did you play? And then now co after COVID or whatever in the middle, whatever, do you, are you playing now? And do you think your creativity has changed because of this or your output or the type of work you do has changed? Chris? I think, I think so. I, I think what's changed is how I define my identity because I think my, before my identity was solely as an entrepreneur, first and foremost, whereas and now my identity is just in being myself. Hmm. So I'm, I'm less attached to work being the thing that makes me who I am, hmm. as opposed to just being a part of what I do. Mm, man, that's a good. So I think that I had for a long time, um, I think. I've been challenged. I think Mario challenged me. He's like, well, do you want to call yourself a designer? Do you want to call yourself a creative or do you want to call yourself an entrepreneur? And I was like, oh, maybe I'm, I don't want to, if I say I'm a designer, I don't want to limit that somebody else who's an illustrator might not connect because maybe 
that would be too limiting. Anyway, so there's all these words that we, we, you know, if I was just as a teacher, right? Like if that's the only way I identified, I may have an identity crisis when I stop teaching, right? Mm -hmm. I just think about those things. Maybe I'm the only one. So here's some other, here's where I use frisket. This is the frisket brisket in use. It sort of looks yellow here, but it's really pink when it goes down. And this is what it looks like when I've used it, right? So I've just put other watercolor. These are just in a sketchbook again, because I'm being stretched and pushed. Um, I'm going back to rocks and I'm doing rocks in different ways and I'm going back and seeing things. So I also do little sketches that I haven't even made into anything, but sometimes I even make rock flowers. It looks like, I guess. Um, and these are small, right? These are not big drawings. These are really, really little. Um, but I, I write, Oh, I like this one, you know, like, okay, this one's a good one. Um, I've done, I did the study about mushrooms. I hate mushrooms. Actually. I don't like to eat them. I don't like the texture. Um, but I do a ton of like rock, like, Oh, let's do this rock drawing. Like I haven't done it, but, and then the, I don't like these rocks with these mushrooms. I like the mushrooms better than I like the rock, but I do like the way mushrooms look. And then here's some more. And then I'm iterating. So I find something that, oh, this kind of is cool. And then I'm like, oh, I've tried it here and I never tried it again. But here's another one. These are all more recent. And this is kind of based off of somebody else's piece that I see. Um, and then I change it because I didn't want to draw as many little rocks and I didn't want to do the same colors and I use different tools. And I, but I, I filled up a whole page in my sketchbook on this. And I, it, I'd say it's almost complete. Maybe I'll pull it some other small ugh, booger snot, that thing. Anyway, I'm not going to go back to the thing. So I, I want you to know how, and maybe you do this too. I've broken my sketchbooks for my students. I've made them break into three kind of types of entries. So there's inspiration, there's exploration, and then there's iteration. So I kind of did the same thing here. And I didn't notice that I had done this, but I I was already doing this and thank goodness I got to teach this class. So this is, I put stuff that I'm reading in books into my sketchbook. And these are literally, these look like the Sachiko Umoto. I don't know how to say that, but um, learning begins by inti <laughs> intimidating. Nope. That's not what it says. Imitating. <laughs> so, but to me, it's like, okay, I was just, I want to see how this person does it. I want to be able to draw simple, super cute things. So I'm just going to copy this person and I'm giving them credit. Really, all of this is just me copying what her or his uh, drawings were. And then up here, this is from, so I know I was at home at this point, 12, 28, 17. I had gotten this book for Christmas. So Freehand, I think this is this book that uh, both uh, Van and I both have that we both really like. We don't read it, but we just look at the pictures. Um, but it's uh, Sketching Tips and Tricks Drawn from Art by Helen Birch. It's a great little book. Um, it's like a small little book like this. And I really like this. This is from this drawing freehand book. And the, I, this is kind of an exact replica. This is, this is, and this. I thought these trees looked like golf clubs. I was like, I love that. It's such a different take on a tree. And then I made my own things, this boat. And I don't know what this, a, a building, but it's also a vase, you know, and I, I just was off register and just trying different things. I don't know why that gray thing's at the bottom. Sorry. So then I have these iterations and they end up, some things come up over and over. So like my rocks come up over and over and maybe you do too. Maybe there's like a style that you do over and over, but maybe there is a subject matter that you do. So I end up drawing, I do draw these because I think these could be, I don't know what these could be. You know, really, I make monsters out of them. I think he's really cute. But I also do this, which is like, I don't know what this is, but this is very relaxing to me to make the shape and I make the shape a lot. So is there something in your sketchbooks that you're drawing a lot for no purpose, except maybe it's just practice. It's the thin up, heavy stroke down. So it's thicker down, right? Thin, thick, thin, thick. I don't know. Maybe nobody's talking to me. No, has anybody uh, Maura McDonald said cats. Cats. Okay, cats. So then I think that they, obviously I draw lots of like 
shapes of plants or something. But like Hannah says floral things. Okay. So then, then is there a specific floral even, or is there a specific type of cat or, or maybe you push yourself in those two, like your sketchbook isn't really complete because you haven't had a page of cats yet, you know? (laughs) Um, But then I did this when I was at a conference and I was just filling the page. Now it could have been the tool I was using too, because I had a, a pin that went, was flexible and it had thin strokes when I would go up, right. Not put a lot of pressure. And then as I would go down, like in lettering, it would be heavier. So I did this, but it's the same thing over and over. And I end up doing this a lot. So then that shape became something else. It became this guy and this guy, and then this sort of cat with no mouth. Um, Clearly I can't draw someone with, and look at this, like this lady's legs and her butt crack. I don't know. That's not her, that's her legs, but that's, I guess her little hiney anyway. And that's such a weird hand, but I like this guy. So I kind of took this no mouth person and then this, I didn't really like this one, but I was like, okay, I'm just iterating on things. I'm not expecting this to be something that I'm going to town with. I do like him. I think, I don't know what his name is, but I like him. And then I end up drawing these cats. So Maura, I draw these cats and I really, really, really try not to X things out. So this and this, there was something must have been on this little shape. Maybe I clearly couldn't get the cat. Like, what is my perspective? It's terrible. But it was like, okay. So then I started adjusting and making, I pretty much was just replicating. And I, I guess I tried a different tail and I tried the head, head a little bit tighter. And then I tried it with one of those you know, pop colors. And, and then these were that I'm making somebody with those weird loopy loop hands or something, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm just iterating. Maybe you do something like this too. Maybe there's something that you come back to my friend, Carl. Oh, did you, were you going to say something? No, I just looked up and saw these faces. Oh, so my friend, Carl, who he's been on Chris's podcast, um, Carl Yonke, he teaches animation at uh, uh, at South Alabama where I teach. And he's like, Diane, you need to, all your faces, like he was looking at my sketchbook with me and he's like, all your faces are front front facing. You need to work on um, doing things from different angles. And I was like, oh, I love, I love having people who are going to tell me how I need to work and grow. Right. So I don't know why I made like elephant or a rabbit person, but like, I just started, he's like, use cones, like think about a piece of paper and you're making something else with it. And I was like, oh, this is a great exercise. Clearly I didn't finish, but I did a lot of these. And then this is a spread. So this is pretty messy to me. And uh, this was in 2018 because I know I was, uh, my pastor had asked me to do a coaster that said, where is Jesus on one side? And then on the other side, it said, slow down. And so I was just writing a whole bunch of slow downs. So I thought this sort of looked like a face. Do you see the nose and there's an eye and maybe another eye and this is the mouth. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Um, And then I like this one. I don't know. You know, I'm just, I always think that you kind of have to draw the nose and you have to draw a mouth because otherwise it could look sort of like a boy part a little bit. So I, um, I try to always draw the mouth with it. Uh, so anybody, uh, and my friend, Jen, she comes sometimes to design recharge, but then if I'm ever like copying something, I try to, I try to put, give the person's, you know, uh, credit. Like this is by Lydia Nichols and it was an ad for Amway, you know, and I'm, I'm just making a mess. Look more rocks though, right? There's these rocks that are in a line and Rocks show up a lot. So I guess I was thinking about slow down and turtles. And um, this like was a yield sign that became a bear. Do you see there's his eyes and this became his nose. So I'm just, I'm just drawing and I'm just making kind of a big mess, but I ended up and I wasn't confident in my person. So I did a whole bunch of these people. This was the best one. And my husband, um, he definitely always tells me like this. He was like, why does it say how down? And I'm like, oh, no, it doesn't say how down. It's a slow down. But it does sort of look like how down, doesn't it? So you got to have people who are going to be honest with you. So how down? Where's Jesus? Um, and sometimes I make things that don't make sense. So maybe are you too controlled? Are you trying too hard 
to make it like somebody else's. You're trying in your business to be like somebody else, or you're trying and, or you're doing something that somebody told you to do because they think that's right. And you trust them. And you're just trying to go like on this. I really don't, this is somebody else's. I just copied this, but this is like the one thing I like. I don't, I guess it's like a cupcake upside down with like a cherry or something. Um, I've drawn chicken wings before. I don't even like chicken wings, but then like there's this monster that shows up because I can draw a monster. You know, when I start worried that I can't draw something, monsters come up a lot too. So this is based off of someone else's. This is kind of the same thing. This was me trying to draw the little thing on the, when you're sitting in the airplane, the thing that lets down the little tray. I thought it looked like a nose. Anyway, it was somewhere else as well, but Again, I'm, I don't have a purpose for these and I didn't even think that there was anything. It's just really about getting my hand moving and exploring. But maybe as I've looked back, there was actually something there I could go off of or something I could iterate. So if I was Mara, I would go back and be like, hey, I need to do something else with these cats. Or if I'm Hannah, I'm going to do something else with these, these florals and I'm going to be specific in trying to create something with them. So it's kind of like what I've done with the rocks when it's on real paper. So I even have done collage. So now this over on the left is not collage, but it's sort of like a MC Escher. So it kind of reminds me of Debbie's stuff from last week. Um, Not that mine is not at all like Debbie's. I know. Don't want you to be like, oh my gosh, she said she was like you, Debbie. Oh no, that's not what I'm saying. But it has this sort of like black and white and it kind of is like, woo, woo, you know, like I can imagine Maybe it's not. I'm looking at Chris's face and he doesn't seem to be seeing the same thing I am. So I'm going to uh, it's sort of like a. I don't know, a visual play, I guess, those little round things. But then the thing on the I right, they were cinnamon rolls. what I thought they were cinnamon, cinnamon rolls. rolls. <laughs> Maybe they are. Yeah. This one's heavily iced. Right. Mm-hmm. Do you know what this was before I cut it? I, uh, an IBM logo. No, it was um, it, the barcode on like one of those things you get in a magazine to send it back, you know, the postage paid or something. Um, but I really love these like black lines. And then I just took green paper and and these are tiny little collages. Right. And then this collage fed into a whole new series that I did with Design Recharge Bevs like Will will remember and Brian uh, from Kansas and Amy Lyons. I know you did this and Debbie did it too. And so we did this design recharge bevs. And this was the first beverage collage that I did. One, this is the reason I did legs and a limited color palette. And that I was doing real collage because I liked something in my sketchbook. I also like I started with the ro- blobs as rocks and then it became right. These were the rocks. And then I turned them into uh, other things. And now I draw other things with them that don't have any purpose, but it's just really a warm up. And I, I don't try to make anything with it, but I really like this bunny. It's like a butt bunny. Do you see the butt bunny? I do. <laughs> okay, good. And I, I'm not sure, like, I don't think bunnies have these kind of feet, but this butt bunny does. And I mean, his mouth is his butt. Anyway, is his leg. I don't know. And then I tend to do this. Like, I like this. It's not a big heart. Not like I'm big circling nothing. It's like, I like this one. It looks like she's wearing like a tomato hat or something. I just like tomatoes. I don't know why she doesn't have arms really. And then I'm not sure how I got this, but this is, this person doesn't have a head. This is like a ponytail. Doesn't it totally look like a ponytail? Mm -hmm. And then a bird. And then I don't know, this is like somebody with no hair on the top, but really long hair on the sides. And then this is like Like a Muppet. Yeah. Kind of a Muppet. And then this is, this is her eye and this is her nose. And she's got a really strong forehead and she's just kind of blobby, but I love her. There's something about her. And, and I look at this duck. It totally looks like that. Like it looks like a good duck. Do you see it? That is a good duck. And then, I showed this. This is something I've done. These little pieces. Sometimes it's good to work small. This is like, to me, this is pretty big. This is like five by seven. Just using two colors, making marks, repetition. And I made a chicken with one eye. Like it doesn't, you still know it's a chicken. I'm pretty sure. Or at least a bird, right? 
Yeah, he's staring into my soul right he now. He is. He is staring at you. <laughs> so I also, so again, we there's iteration, inspiration, and exploration. And then exploration, I just kind of, like if you were marking up your sketchbook and you were color coding it with which pages were what, what aren't you doing enough of? So maybe exploration. So Chris, I put this in because this to me is Cosmos foot. I was like, I'm going to make Cosmos foot in rocks. And I was like, cause I was just thinking about his little dog. And I was like, Oh, I just love, we, I, uh, I have a, one of my clients is a doggy daycare. And so I have a, their pug was named Pugsley and I have babysat Pugsley. Pugsley's in heaven with Jesus now, but um, we have Pugsley's paw print that we use all over. And obviously Pugsley was a pug, if that wasn't quite obvious with the name, but like, this is just something that's over to the right. And look, I'm like totally messing up. Like the little thing in the front, I, I don't mind that little, but I don't know what this is, button poof. And then this is like, stuff like this, I end up doing, look, two rocks. It looks like maybe another rock, but then I don't know what I was doing with this yellow thing, but I don't care. Like there's freedom in my sketchbook to just make a mess. Um, and I carry my sketchbook with me everywhere. Again, more, more rocks. I've messed up. Like this paper is really thin. This is something I did the other day. Like I made a pencil that doesn't, have a point on the side. Like, I don't even know how you'd write with this pencil. And then this looks like some kind of Greek guy. And this is just me working out color things or, you know, different. I wanted this to be really dark black and it just didn't have the right colors. And then a bird with a really thing. I don't even know, but I guess you can always overwork things, but in your sketchbook, maybe it's okay. It's kind of like Chris, as you were writing your book, I kept thinking um, you would expand upon things the next time when you edit and and then you're going to edit down so that overworking is part of it sometimes you just need to get stuff out right and then i just like and i was just thinking of music scales too because not everything that you play with music is going to be a song sometimes you're just playing a major scale and it becomes a song and you just you have to like think of that as your sketchbook and, and absolutely, I love that you brought music in because music, we know we have to practice mm-hmm. and we don't think that we're just going to be like, oh, well, I bought a piano. <laughs> I'm good. You know, I'm going to be, you know, doing a concert on Saturday. No, we know that it will take years to get really good at it. But why, why do we think that, you know, if you don't exercise this skill of drawing or making or even imagining that we will get better if we, if we don't practice it. Um, And I just think maybe we need to play more games or we need to have more. I mean, me and my friend Jody yesterday, were just talking in British accents. I was like, are you doing this as a challenge today with your kids? And she's like, no, I just like to talk in this accent. Sometimes I've actually been paid to be, and I haven't, she has, she's been, hers is really good. Anyway, like then little things like this even end up like this is a monster that was on a sheet of paper that was a like a, a torn, uh, like a list of something, you know, grocery list or something. And he ends up and sometimes these tiny little things will show up as and I can make something from that. So I did want to take you through this just because I thought this was a really good process. And maybe you have a weird process like this, too. I would love to see this. And if you're coming to Creative South, I want to see this. I want you to bring this or I would like for you to text me because I sit, have my phone number at the end. I want you to text me this, whatever your weird process is. So I am in the bathroom at Mellow Mushroom. Okay. I, if you don't know me, I have a tiny bladder and I always have to go. My parents always were like, oh, what you rate the bathroom? I mean, I had to go every time we went. I really don't know exactly why, but I have a really small bladder. So I'm sitting there and they've refurbished the bathroom at Mellow Mushroom, but they clearly didn't clean the floor. Right. But all I kept seeing this was like, I guess where the pole used to be and they just sawed it off, but didn't clean. I don't know. Maybe they did try. I don't know. But this was like a bigger eyeball and then another eyeball. And I love that they're so far away. So it kind of reminds me of Blake Stevenson's Jetpack and Roller Skates. He's one of my favorite illustrators. 
I've had him on here a long time ago. I love him. And that's kind of, I love how he has his eyes so far apart. And I'm like, okay, I see that. That's what I saw here. And so I made this little drawing, not really, I mean, I'm not a good robot drawer, but when I'm uncomfortable, I will draw rocks and robots because nobody can be like, that's not, that's not a rock. Uh, yeah, it is. It's a rock. It, that's not a robot. I made it up. How do you know what a robot might or might not look like? But you can see, whoa, really went through some changes from that one thing to here. I did want it to say refueling. I ended up saying refueling. I went through multiple pieces in here. I had even some students and our friend, uh, Chris Allen, he helped me with some of the type that was here. And this is as Alan was a sophomore in college, but this was really big that he helped me with my first sticker. And this was the first sticker. So you can kind of see, I think this is the more, this is the end. Um, this is one of the pre ends. So this is what it was. I should have had these in different places anyway. Um, but this was kind of like me working it out. This sort of looks like it was from, you know, Will Robinson, uh, what was that TV show? Lost in Space. Lost in Space, yes. And I, so this is me like fixing it. And I was like, so if you look, he's very sad. He's a very sad robot. And this doesn't look like it's in the right perspective, right? It's, it's off. I don't even know if I ever fixed that. Um, but this is the final. Nope, I never did. But I did give him a smile. So that big eye, you remember from the thing on the floor, it had a bigger eye right on the right as it did on the left. So I end up drawing a lot of robots and they usually will have one bigger eye than the other. Or just like Blake Stevenson, I have these small eyes, but they're really far apart. Or like this guy, this guy, I didn't show all the progress of this, but this is inside of an envelope, which I just think is so funny that it's like his little, he really was sad when I drew him the first time it was sad. And then I gave him buck teeth and I made him look like, oh, but then I made him happy, but he has one bigger eye and one small eye. Right. And so now this one's called a happy pants. Um, and she is a robot. She's a robot. Um, yeah, she's a robot, Diane. She's a vacuum cleaning robot. Do you see it? Like that's her vacuum hose or something. I drew her at church. I draw a lot at church. Um, and then these are some of like all the monsters together, right? Van says the robots are so cute. So I, the pattern was, thank you, Van. The pattern that was revealed was rocks and robots and a couple other things, but rocks and robots. So if you have the Bruce sticker, this is the original, but I didn't like the drawing. So I angled the drawing, the photo, and I took the photo at a little bit different angle. I actually kind of like these a little bit better. Um, and then I have an Art Rock sticker, because and it's a rock, Karen. And then this one, if you know Andrew Hawk Rattle from Creative South, this was Andrew's, I was saying, this was his Roomba or d bot or whatever um and then i don't know why this lady's wearing it but this is a pin that doesn't not supposed to be used with water and i did it anyway and i really liked the way it looked um so love on the rocks i again another rock karen and making the v a heart um and then here art rocks this is where i thought i was going to do art rocks like this i'm glad i ended it the other way this is a small one uh i think it's upside down actually but doesn't really matter, but these are like solid black. They're just, this is one of the first ones I had done. Clearly, I really like those white lines on the black rocks. And then this is one that I maybe have given you the sticker. But, oh, boogers. This is one, this is one that is um, the inside of the envelope too. Like happy pants, the little button guy. This is the same thing, but I just did it in black and white. But isn't that beautiful as a, I mean, that's an awesome inside of envelope. Don't you think? Yeah, that's wild. Did you so, zoom that in at all? Or was that just the normal pattern? Oh, that's a normal pattern. I oh. mean, I'll, yeah, I'm sure it's here somewhere. I definitely I have it scanned in. Um, and then I just do little collages that don't make, uh, again, a robot dog. Cause I, you're not going to tell me that it's not a robot dog, right? Like it's just what I want it to be. Again, look at the eyes that are separate. So if you don't think you have a style, 
you may have a style and maybe hands are really difficult. So why not make a hand out of something else that you don't really care about? But then it kind of made it, I made a little green collage, right? So multiple layers. And then again, I made other um, different rocks, rocks with different um, accents. And that's it. That's so it's rocks, robots, and collage. Those are things that show up eyeballs to the side. And then if you want to text me your cool thing, that's my phone number. And then I have a new email address. I don't have many people know it, but I'll be switching over to the designrecharge.org to being to this one. I'll keep that one for a while, for a few years, just in case. But this will be my new email. The end. So what patterns? I want to know what patterns you found in your stuff. Did you think about anything in your that you see as a pattern? You know, it's funny. Like I, when you were talking about the, the abstract kind of look with the thing that you turned into rocks, it reminded me of a story when I took an art class for the first time at the, at uh, university of Washington and the, the art instructor walked up to me and I'm like, just working in charcoal. And he goes, I can hear you thinking a mile away. He goes, just, take your hand and smear all the charcoal and say, forget about it. Just don't think about it. And it ended up voted the best drawing of that day. And it was because he, he knew just how much I was overanalyzing, overthinking and wanting it to be right. Mm. I think about that daily almost. Well, so your last podcast I was listening to, I went and got my oil changed this morning, got my hair cut, ate lunch with Suzanne. And I was listening to this podcast and you talked about um, with your guest, you talked about, I feel like I'm just repeating your podcast, but it's okay. It's good. You're here. But it was about um, learners and uh, I don't know what you called it, early learning and then people who are master learner or they're they're supposed to be the experts in their field do you want to tell them what you said do you remember what you said i don't remember what i said (laughs) so but there are two separate things right but you called it a dichotomy because it actually the master learners and i'm butchering it sorry chris but what i got was that these what i clearly don't remember so there you go it was a while ago i think because you were recorded and put it out but um, but like, if we are a, a expert or a master learner, then we know that they're always, there's always work to do. And your guest had said, cause he was a woodworker and Chris has people all, they're all different kinds of people. Like if you like to learn about things, you will love getting work to work. Like there was a guy who talked about selling pallets, not like Wee oui, wee, oui, let me paint the pallet right with the pallet. Not that like the pallets, the wood pallets that that John Ingalls can make some cool art, art with or things for their store with or display, you know, point of purchase displays out of. I mean, like, that's what I love. I love. And that's why I love Chris, because he always has these different things coming in that he's teaching me something. But the, in this last podcast was this guy, he's teaching people how to turn do wood working and he had a surgeon in there and the surgeon was like wow i didn't know and again i don't always hear well because i have an ear disease so um i might not have heard this right but this is what i got out of it but that the surgeon was like i didn't know that my surgery or being a doctor would have really been an asset for me being an artist because he can't get in. Oh my gosh, I made that mark. Oh my gosh, I cut them wrong. I'm a terrible surgeon. You can't. You're like, hey, stitch it up, buddy. You made a mistake. Get busy. You don't have time to feed into that. And I had for so many years cross things out. So many years, like your teacher's telling you to just scrub through it, right? And it's because there's nothing on the line. Nobody's going to die if we, I'm going to just scribble this out or I'm going to erase it. But maybe what are we missing by not moving on and continuing to solve the new problem that we have? And I thought that that was really big. Like that was a really big insight into learning and learning new things and being, cause he said, 
he's better. Your guest said that he's better. He still is not always great at being gracious with himself. You had talked about, I should be able to do this. I've been able to, I do all these things with computers and cameras. I should be able to fix my guitar in the first time. Right. But, but it, you, you couldn't and you mess up and we all mess up. So, but there's something really beautiful about thinking of it if like we were surgeons. Well, we got to fix it now. This is what we've got to fix. And I think you learned some things as you fix your guitar, right? Yeah. Well, I, and, you know, last week I went to Boston to work on a job and I had a big epiphany where there's so much in my head where I'll try to anticipate everything that could go wrong. And I tend to over plan and have way too much gear, way too much everything. But when you show up and you sit down with the client and you're doing the actual work, you go into a different mode of problem solving. You're solving real problems as opposed to imaginary problems. And I forgot how much fun it is to solve the real problems as opposed to the ones I'm making up in my head. Yeah. Yeah. I, anyway, that was a great episode. It really had me going. I should always listen to your episode before I do a rapid recharge because it gave me lots of fodder. But I did actually plan this this uh, last night and I, I, or yesterday, I finished it last night. Um, but for me, it can be embarrassing, I think, to, I can imagine if I was new to playing the guitar and I was having people come and watch me play, I would be, oh, I would be like, oh my gosh, I should know how to do this better. Right. But I haven't played the guitar. I probably would never do a concert because I'd be like, so it's really big for me to share stuff like this, things that I don't think are worked out, but maybe this is where if we do it, that's the only time we can grow. So if I never showed it to my husband, then he would never be telling me, hey, this is overworked. And then I wouldn't know to cut it up or I wouldn't um, I, I would have just given up. And like, this is that me sink, you know, it's a very three dimensional. So I like the trees. So again, maybe I don't like everything down here, but maybe there's something I can pull from this part. And um, I really don't like this one, but oh, well, you know, like I learned and it, it influenced had requests for sales. Pardon? You had some sales requests on the Nessie. Oh, well, sweet. Uh, but like, this is not small. So it took time. I mean, it's a lot, it's a lot bigger than my, but it was that I took the time to do it. And there's even like a sheen. I don't think you can see it because of the, oh, there, but you still can't see it anyway. It doesn't matter. Um, but I think, you know, if we just take time to play, even making messes, things that aren't really, I mean, look at the back of it. Like, I totally don't think this is great, but there's the 3D. I do like the 3D. That one's not 3D. And this one, like there's something, you know, and that Paul saw that this looks like a fish. And I was like, yeah, maybe. But just even painting this dark with that graphite was so, uh, it was a stress reliever. Isn't there something just in that? And I think one of the things your your episode, could you put that episode in the link? Could you put the link in the chat, please, sir, um, so that people can get to it easier? Um, was that m- there's always something to learn from the mistakes that you've made so that next time you won't make that same thing, but maybe then it isn't a mistake at all. Oh, yeah. So it was getting work to work dot co slash 600 people 600 episode 600 that is like woohoo chris got a dog in six episode 600 that's amazing we should celebrate more i agree yeah we can learn from everything and everyone and chris is killing it brian i absolutely agree chris thank you for producing great content um 600 episodes for never giving up and for getting a puppy and for taking great photos so that I get to see him. And I'm just thankful that you're my friend and that you do these with me. Um, And I'm thankful for Dee when she does them too. And so just thank you guys. And I can't wait to see you. We'll do one more episode. It's the last episode of the artist series. And it is Joanna. I think there's Paula. P-A- 
O L A. Yeah, I think it's Joanna Paula. Okay, that's it. I'm going to make her say her own last name because clearly I was saying Mario's name wrong for like four years. So I'm going to just not say people's last name anymore. I've been practicing Mario's last name and I still can't say it good. It's all right. Anyway, I'm going to just keep trying. So thank you guys. Oh, and Brian, we'll see you next week. And um, I'm just excited. So we have one more week and then we have Creative South. And I'm just thankful. I'm so thankful to be able to hug people in, yes, fan, in in real life. And I hope you guys will see you next week at Mindset Reboot too. And I'll be here for Joanna's on Wednesday. So can't wait. The end. <laughs>